family, and welcome to the Jesus Reveal podcast series here at Salem Word of Truth. And we are in day three, which looks at the temptation of Jesus, the 40 days and 40 nights. And with me today is Pastor Marcus. Pastor Marcus, welcome and thank you for being here. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Great. Thank you. So uh, our scripture references are, are Matthew 4 uh, from verse 1, Mark 1 from 12 to 13, and, and Luke chapter 4, I believe, from, from verse 1 to, to 13 as well. Now, there, there, there are certain components, and I think I, I'll be led a bit by, by Matthew 4 around his temptation. So, and, I, and I'll break it up before we get to the actual temptation. So the first part is where Jesus is led by the Spirit into the wilderness. So why did this need to happen? Why did the Spirit lead Jesus to be, to be tempted in the wilderness? Zinkley, thank you for having me. If we recall the scripture, Jesus was just baptized. Yeah. The voice from heaven, which is God's voice, this is my beloved son, yeah. in whom I am well pleased. Because thus far from birth till the age of 30, Jesus is without sin. Yeah. Jesus is walking on the surface of the earth, experiencing what humanity had to go through, yeah. a man without sin. I recall, you go back to the book of Genesis. When Adam and Eve were created, they were created in the likeness of God. Yeah. That is the spirit. When Eve was tempted, when Adam was tempted, and they failed, they were in the spirit. So Satan tried to imitate the same scenario. Okay. The wilderness, the jungle, the garden, Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. So Satan tried to portray the same picture so that Jesus could be tricked, Jesus could be tempted. Yeah. But yet again, the question was, why was he led? He had to have been led in the spirit so that Satan could fulfill his aim. Great. Thank you for that, Pastor Marcus. And I'm also then, I know you touched on it a, a bit around the, the wilderness and, and the significance of the wilderness and why Jesus had to go there specifically to be tempted. There, there are some parallels, for example, that, that I see with the, with the, with the Israelites in, in the book of Exodus and them going through the wilderness once they, they, they exited Egypt. But uh, I just want you to then to bring, it, to bring the, the significance of being uh, tempted and fasting as well in the wilderness and, and not anywhere else, and why that had to be, I guess, the perfect setting for, for that to take place. Wilderness speaks of an un uncultivated environment, yeah. an area that is not farmed, an area that is not highly occupied, but it is occupied, inhabited by wild animals. Yeah. So you have that setting, even John the Baptist came from the wilderness, yeah. fasting 40 days and 40 nights, eating nothing but honey and locusts. Yeah. So the same setting Jesus had to go through, the exact same setting, uh, uh, what Lucifer, what Satan tried to portray was this thing called trickery. Hence, he was taken in the spirit. He was led by the spirit, not in the human form, but in the spirit. Just after God had said, I am pleased with him. Yeah. And then Jesus goes now and fasts for 40 days. Yeah. And let's look at then. Thank, thank you for that, Pastor Marcus. Let, let's look at the, the time. Because I, I don't think it, it's not a coincidence that he fasted 40 days and 40 nights. And, and we have seen, as you have stated previously, that the, John the Baptist did the same. We see it in the, in the Old Testament as well with the Israelites. There is that number, the, the 40 days, the 40 nights. And why, why that number? 40 is significant in, the, in Christendom. Yeah. You, you have, I'm jumping again, I'm jumping just to set the stage. Jesus revealed himself for 40 days mm. and 40 nights 
after his crucifixion. You had Moses in the book of Deuteronomy. You had Joshua in the book of Exodus. Yeah. And you had Elijah in 1 Kings 19 that also fasted for 40 days. So 40 is significant of law. Let me highlight. 39 stripes upon the back of Jesus. If he was lashed with 40, he would have broken the law of treason. But they could only give him 39. So 40 is significance to law, to some form of obedience. Yeah. Hence, the 40 days of fasting. Moses, 40 years old, was exiled from Egypt, had to walk 40 years in the wilderness. Yeah. 40 year journey would have only taken them 11 days. Yes. But here was 40 years. All significance to God's divine plan Great. and purpose for humanity. Great. And I think just referencing day two, we see that pattern then of Jesus always being someone who fulfills and complies with God's law and never wants to deviate from that. Yeah. Hence yeah. we have the Jesus revealed. Yeah. Indeed, Amen. indeed. Thanks for that, Pastor Marcus. Yeah. Now let's dig into then the temptations. All right. Because again, every set of temptation speaks to something. There's the there's the turning off stones into 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 bread. There's the jumping off of the highest point of the temple in Jerusalem. There's the temptation then of giving him the kingdom, and and all of them are, are premised every time that that. I guess Satan tempts him. He tempts him of the whole thing of him being the son of God. As post the baptism, God confirmed him as the son of God and confirmed him as, as his chosen one as well, as Pastor Adrian said yesterday. In that, it's his son, it's his chosen one, and he is well delighted in him, or he brings him great joy. But here's Satan then tempting him on the same thing that God already confirmed. We set the stage, yeah. Genesis chapter 3, the garden, the wilderness, wild beast, wild animals. Satan portrays the same image in the spirit yeah. so that Jesus could see. Bread signifies food. The tree in the garden of Eden was food, which Jesus said, uh, which God had said to Adam, you may partake of all the fruit found in the midst of the garden, yeah. except this one. So again, Satan used Jesus' hunger against Jesus. Now you know and I know to us as Christians, Bread signifies the body of Jesus. Yeah. So Satan used Jesus' own body against him. Yeah. Yeah. If you are the son of God, turn these stones to bread. You know and I know that you and I come from the dust of the ground. Yeah. The dust of the ground is stones. Yeah. The dust of the ground is all the precious metals, the dust of the ground, is the earth itself. So Satan used that which God used when he fashioned and formed man. Turn these stones to bread. And what did Jesus say? Again, the Jesus revealed. Man cannot live by bread alone, but by every Word. What was God trying to show Satan then? God was showing Satan then, you fooled Adam and Eve with your words when you had told them that this tree was good for food. For fruit of, food of, good and evil. Knowledge. Yeah, yeah. You're not going to do that to me. It is written. Yeah. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word. So here Jesus is speaking God's obedience yes. into existence. Yes. 
already through temptation, you know, you fast for 40 days, Zinkle, you're going to be hungry. The body is going to be aching. And this 40 days of fasting, sir, I think we alluded to it already. It was to prepare Jesus for the ministry that lied ahead. Yeah. Yes, a short span, three years. But that was his ministry. Those three years of giving up his life so that you and I don't be conformed to the pattern of this world. Indeed. Indeed. And I just want to then just touch on how Jesus responds to the devil. And I think we'll go through the various temptations and, and I think I'll allow you to run there. Uh, I just want to go through how Jesus responds because the theme across is really Jesus responding using God's word. Correct. Yeah. He responds constantly by saying, it is written. Yeah. Now, you know and I know that the word of God is the Bible, the basic instruction before leaving earth. Yeah. So, and Jesus is that instruction. Jesus is the word. So Jesus here himself speaks himself yeah. into existence. Yeah. He says, it is written. Who wrote it? I wrote it. Hence, I'm delivering it to you now, devil. You yeah. cannot have me because I know what I have written. Yeah. It is written, man shall not live by bread alone. Great. Now, Pastor Marcus, I just want to give you the floor All right. in terms of just walking us through the various temptations, their, their significance as to why then was he particularly tempted in, in this sort of thing. You've touched on the, the, the turning of the stones into, into, into loaves. Now, uh, if you could please just go through the him then being taken to a, a high point, the highest point of the temple in Jerusalem, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and being told that he, if, if he's the son of God, he can jump off and the angels will, 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 will lift him up. And, and, and as well as then the devil then tempting him with the, with the whole kingdoms of the world. Within, within the last two temptations, uh, uh, Brother Zinkley, we see that dominion which so rightfully belonged to Adam yeah. was given to Satan. When Adam failed, when Adam was disobedient, yeah. the devil thought he could beguile Jesus in the exact same manner as Eve said to God. Why have you done this? The serpent beguiled me. The serpent tricked me. So, so Jesus here was retrieving the dominion. When Satan said to Jesus up on a high pinnacle, yeah. again, Satan wanted to show Jesus even on the synagogue that Satan was high. Yeah, yeah. He wanted to reveal to Jesus, I have the authority here. Mm. If you throw yourself off this mount, this pinnacle, this tower, surely he's give angels charge over you. Yeah. We see that in Psalms 91. Yeah, yeah. We see that in charge. But however, it's a misrepresentation of the text. Why is that? Although he quoted the text correctly, he misrepresented the text. Indeed. Indeed. Why? Because he meant it for evil. Yeah. And what did Jesus say yet again? He says, no, no. It is written. Yeah. Thou shalt not... And we need to place emphasis on the fact that he said, the Lord... Your God. So even Jesus at the time knew that God is the God of Satan. Yeah. Because he said it is written, thou shalt not tempt the Lord your God. Yeah. 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 You know, there's a reason for that. Because that's what he did in Isaiah 14.12. That's what he did in, in, in Ezekiel 28. He, he wanted to take over, to exalt himself yeah, far above yeah. the throne room of heaven. And Jesus just put it again into perspective. Thou shalt not tempt the Lord 
your God. Mm-hmm. Amen. Yeah, let's go to the last let's one. Go then, the last one. Yeah, let's yeah, go to yeah. the last one. Let's go to the last one, shall we? Now, you, you mentioned something quite significant around Satan then usurping the dominion from Adam. Correct. And we see him then presenting his proposed dominion then to Jesus around giving him the kingdoms Correct. of the world if Jesus then were to renounce God and would bow down to him. Remember, remember, it wasn't just to bow down, it was to bow and mm, worship. worship. Yeah. So, so when, when we look at that again, we see, we see and we understand that, that Adam handed dominion yeah. freely yeah. over to Satan. Satan knew that he had that dominion. Hence, he pointed out the kingdoms of the world. Because Satan had been there. He had seen what they were doing. And here was this obstacle now that prevented him from having total and complete access. So he takes Jesus again in the spirit to the high pinnacle, Mm. the highest place in this kingdom. And what does he do? He says, if you would just bow down and worship me. And again, Jesus looks at the kingdoms. All of this Jesus knows because it was Jesus who formed. It was Jesus who fashioned. It was Jesus that spoke these things into existence. And yeah, the devil, Satan, wants to to throw this beguilement yeah. in front of Jesus and says, just bow down. Right. Jesus knows his authority. Yeah. And the fact that Jesus had to say to S- Satan again, thou shalt not what? You shall only worship the Lord again, your God. Yeah. Even though he's Satan, Jesus still says, you shall worship only the Lord, your God. We find that constantly in scriptures. The book of Deuteronomy 6, 13. Thou shalt serve no other but the Lord, your God. So Satan is aware of this. But what he wanted was for Jesus just to bow down once. And again... Again, Jesus quotes from the scripture, it is written. Three times Jesus utters those words, it is written. You see, Zinkle, to go back to ancient biblical teachings, you and I are not tempted of our own accord. We are tempted because we have a tempter. Lucifer did not need a tempter. He himself is the tempter. And that's his function. We subtract from his job description. We deny him his duty. Instead of just submitting to God, resist the devil and he will flee. So what we do is we give him too much credit in saying he's sitting on the pavement, innocent. There's nothing good in the devil. So he's never innocent. That's his function. If he could try and tempt the son of God, the son of man, who are you and I? Indeed. Pastor Marcus, I think we, we're going to have to wrap it up, but, but thank you so much for just unpacking then the, these 40 days and 40 nights. We're going to then go into the, the next episode looking at the, the ministry then of Jesus. But God bless you, Pastor Marcus, and thank you so much for Jesus Reveal podcast. Oh.